This is the City of Flint's City Council Meeting. Presented by Spectacle Productions, determined to make a difference. And the City of Flint, City Council. The Flint Apple Club, a great place to meet friends you never have to see again. Underwritten in part by Local 370 Flint, Michigan, United Association of Union of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, Welders, and Service Techs. Pipe Fitters Union has entry level careers available and available at 810-720-5243. For more information on how to get involved with public access and these broadcasts, you can reach out to 810-239-2901. City of Flint, City Council meeting. Up next. That's the breakdown. But I did want to make sure that you all understood 
that um, you know the way that that's working because I think there might have been a little confusion with the way it was presented before. Okay, Mr. Newsom, yes. I have a. Um, I would like that though that breakdown in writing. Sure. Um, my question though is, what you said there were mo there could be various reasons why it didn't meet <coughs> or didn't get done in the last mm -hmm. um, budget. If you could maybe speak to what those were. But then my second question is, mm -hmm. why all of a sudden had we budgeted to purchase our own snow plow trucks? Yeah. And how much have we allotted to that to changing to deeming that leasing was the way that we were going to go? Hold on, let, me, let me pull that, pull that back up. So originally, let me answer your first question first. Okay. Um, so let's talk about, let's leave the dumb boxes off, because I think that wasn't, I'm so glad Mr. Mr. Um, BQW, so you can answer some of those questions for you. But let's leave the dumb boxes off for a second. So there were no requisitions for purchases that came up, um, I think came up before council, I can't talk specifically about what those were. The number of requisitions we made that, mm -hmm. that came before council, um, that for whatever reason, either because there was a delay in getting in front of the city council and approving the city council and our towns, right? Because this was last year, that's calendar year. So because of that, we had to go in front of council and in front of our town. Um, some of the vehicles that I mentioned outside the fire truck and the dump boxes, those delays forced us to move into <coughs> the next fiscal year. So that's the reason that those purchases didn't happen in the last fiscal year. And the only reason why I ask that question is because it seemed like we had began to do a pretty good job of navigating mm -hmm. when the RTAB and the council needed to approve some things. And, and now my, my question, of course, or the thing that raises to me is now we're in snow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the trucks that we should have bought then, mm -hmm. we probably need now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, that's a question for me. And then the other thing, I, I appreciate the speculation, but I would have liked to know for sure yeah. that that mm -hmm. was the, um, the, the, the reason why this didn't get done. We're talking about um, resolution 32. And I, and, I, and I want to say I, I do want to support this, but but even the information that you're feeding, like for me, I've been on council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So some of these things might be relatively, I might be able to remember, mm -hmm. but, so, but for some of my colleagues that are about to be responsible for making a, a $1 million approval, yeah. mm -hmm. they have no knowledge at all except for information, and they're probably comfortable, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it just would have been helpful to have that in hand like we talked about. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's to, did, to that point. Can you talk? Is this the ones that we approved? Yes. Yeah, so no, that was already, that, that's, this is different. Madam Chair. Yes, you'll be asked to counsel the main. Sure. 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 So most of, I'm, I'm speculating a little bit, but this is for our next year's, if I'm not mistaken, our next year's purchase yeah, the, of so, so this is for our next year's purchase of fleet vehicles. But he said it was, it was allocated last budget year, that wasn't used, so it's not for, yeah. yeah. So that's so a, that's, that's a conflict so that's, of information. That's, this, this is good. Okay. Well, I guess I, I don't yeah. understand what what he was requesting. So Sorry. let me. I'll tell you what. What I will do. Yeah. Um, Councilman Galloway, I will see you the information I have. I do apologize that I, did, I sent you mm -hmm. a series of things for different resolutions. Okay. I didn't send that particular one. I will see you the breakdown in writing. Okay. And um, okay. between now and the time we get to the floor, yeah. if you all choose to move it to the floor, okay. I will have you the, the, the past history. No problem. Councilman Mays. Yeah, um, with all the calls I got from a variety of wards, um, yesterday, maybe a little the day before and today. And I did three ways with Mr. Branch, uh, dealt with calling Betty Weissman's office, so forth and so on. I'm gonna support this, particularly if it's got some money in it for snow flies. And that's what I'm getting at. Um, I've been getting calls left and right from third ward, seventh ward, this ward, that ward. And uh, I keep telling them I'm first ward. But uh, well, we can catch you, Councilman Mays. I'm like, that's good, but I ain't trying to 
But anyway, God bless you. Let's see what we can do. And then I'll do a um, call. So I'm going to support it because of the four trucks. I'm not belittling any other spending. Um, this is the money that's going to supplement the fire truck. That sewer TV thing is going to be good, too, particularly when we go into the next phase of the fast start. So I have no problem with it. I'm going to support this motion moving at the council. And right now with what I'm hearing, um, that was my main question. Um, Chairperson Galloway, what was the purchase is going to be? So he's answered that. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Alan? Uh, hey, you, you, you listed the equipment. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm going to call you. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Between now and like I did commit to getting you, I will get you that on in writing um, shortly. But definitely before we go support. Did you say it did include money for snow plows? Yes. Okay. And so my follow up question is that um, these snow plows, when are they going to be on the streets? So as soon as we can get the bid out. Okay. So, 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 so there is a bid. Mm -hmm. How how long does the bid process mm -hmm. normally take? It can take anywhere from say a month, a month and a half. Yeah, the, the bid process so, is not the problem. The the building of the trucks is actually the problem. So the so, trucks have so, to be built. So once we get once we get them bid, and then um, <coughs> that's approved, we get through that. Then they'll go in line at the the upfitter. Uh, once they receive the chassis from the manufacturer, and then they'll be they'll be built. So they have to have boxes, plows, etc. Put on. So these snow plows will not affect our snow that we're getting calls from now. They'll be here available for the next season snow. Potentially next year. It, it, we're we're but at that. But they might not be. Yeah, we're at that okay. window where we may not have them. But, but to this point, let's not come back here in nine months because we didn't want to do this action. And again, I'm pulling up the, the budget of actuals that I did send to you guys about two or three weeks ago to show the help of the fund, of the, of the, um, sorry, our fleet fund balance. Let's not be here eight or nine months, and I think that's what Mr. Benz is getting, because it's not a sense of urgency right now for next year, and then next year hits and we have to take an action. So and Mr. Newsom, I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I don't want the perception yep. that's being discussed here today mm -hmm. as if these trucks are going to be an, an impact on what we experienced this weekend, That's fair. right? That's and fair. all I'm saying is we've had snow problems for the last, I've been on council for four years, mm -hmm. and so in even hearing what I'm hearing today, the fact that there was the possibility that we didn't purchase these mm -hmm. and get them through to our tab or make whatever necessary processes or decisions that we needed to because we did a pretty good job, the administration and the council together, of getting before the RTAB things that needed to be approved because we needed them done right away. Even if the RTAB did not come here, they would have a meeting in Lansing right. so that they can approve those necessary expenditures <coughs> in an effort to support the community. Right. And so I just simply wanted to make those things known for the record. And I don't want to be here next year, but I don't want us to act as though we're making a decision today that's going to stop the phone call mm -hmm. that we're probably going to continue to get for the rest of the season. And that's fair. Okay, that's thank fair. you. Right. And so, yes. Councilman Mays. Yeah, we get phone calls normally for snow. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, um, it's when the phone calls come from snow. Through you, Madam Chair, to be proud. We have what about six trucks out there? Uh, the city has 13 trucks. 13 <laughs> trucks. And so, whatever side of the town they start on, sometimes they might start on the, in the ninth ward, sometime maybe in the third, second, first, last, whatever, sometime in the first ward first. So, I'm accustomed for four years when it's a snow, it's going to be called. And so I try to get people to be patient and wait. But the more trucks, the better. So you know, I'm on, I'm, I'm I'm in support of it. Is Councilman Field? Uh, I just have one question. Um, so the trucks we have now, how many we have now? Thirteen, I believe. Thirteen. Okay. Yeah. So this is not going to replace any of the thirteen. This is it, going to make it nineteen. No, around the road. it's going to it's going to replace. Um, the newest plow trucks we have are 2006s, so we have some 2004s, I believe, internationals that it's going to replace. Uh, there's three of those, and I think we'll have a net gain of one total in the fleet. 
Okay. But 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 understand these plows are going to come with wings, which in effect actually doubles the capacity of the truck. So I mean we're we're kind of moving into the 21st century on snow removal when it comes to that. But I want everybody else to know. I mean I get the same calls that you guys do, but you, you need you need to understand what happened this week. We had four snow events this week. So we had four separate snow events totaling over 14 inches of snow. And I'm very, I'm very aware that folks are not happy with the snow removal, but we had crews working around the clock. Um, we, when you get these snow events back to back to back to back, what happens is it takes its toll not only on the equipment, but on the operators as well. And you know, people can't work around the clock. DOT rules only allow them to work 16 hours on, they have to have eight hours off when they're in the CDL vehicle. That's what has to happen. I drove through Burton, Genesee County. Our roads are pretty good in comparison. I'm not saying they're perfect, they're, they're about the same. So I, I think overall the guys did a fantastic job with what was put on us. Can I ask one last question? Bob? I'm sorry, is this is still my turn. Well, I, I thought that you had answered your question. Uh, well, go just ahead. one last question. I just want to know what do we do with the five then that we'll be getting rid of? Do we auction those off or what do we do with those? Yeah, they'll go through the auction process. So that's revenue back? to the general fund or to actually the fleet fund? It goes to fleet, yep. So Rob, can I ask you a question? Um, we live in Michigan. Um, what we've experienced in the last few days, some could say was has been worse, some could say has been better. Is it, Do we have the ability, because we can do a trajectory, if you will, in which we can see about possibly um, contracting workers because we don't need them all the time. But do we have the ability to build in like emergency um, help for scenarios like this? So we know that it wouldn't be often, but usually I think professional services is sometimes um, what we use that um, line for. We know that there may be some bad snow. We might need some help from some contractors to help us um, come in. Do we have the ability, because we don't want anybody to work around the clock. I think your people have done the best that they can, but, but it's not their fault. If we're not making or building in the ability to have extra workers and or leases or, contra I don't know, temporary contracts with companies that can, can help us plow the snow, that's not a reflection of the employees. Is that something that we can look at? You can look at it. The there's, there's, a, there's actually a fundamental problem uh, with that concept. Okay. And the fundamental problem is the equipment. So um, it's no different than when you get, a, you get a rainstorm and you want to go rent a pump. You can't rent the pump because everybody else needs the pump. So the same thing when you get a snow event. Um, there's not people that have fleets of trucks just sitting waiting for the city of Flint to call them and, and bring them in. And, and they're not gonna buy the fleet of trucks because we choose to, to maybe utilize them a couple times a year. That's that's the issue with it. And so to kind of connect the dots, I believe that's what we were trying to purchase these in the last fiscal well, year and then for, so they'd be ready for this year. Now. So as part of our snow plan, we, we do have, I mean, we utilize water and sewer as part of our <laughs> snow removal plan. Um, we've been utilizing our one ton trucks, which Maybe you guys didn't get the, the uh, feedback that we did, but I've gotten great feedback on every snow event we've had this year. Um, this particular one, again, four separate events. Um, each one over four inches takes about two days to clean up. That's, that's our capacity. So, I mean, if, if you look at it, we had four separate snow events, 14, over 14 inches of snow over the last week. If you add up the days, that should be eight days, which they're just about cleaning up as we're talking about right now. They're about finishing it up. Madam Chair. Uh, Councilman, um, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to just end with this, Rob. So, um, so fundamentally, there's really, because once we get these fleet in, you're saying that we're hopefully going to have um, 14 trucks instead of 13, but we will have better equipped trucks, right? Is that what you were saying? We'll have better okay. equipped trucks, and I mean, the reality is with newer equipment, it shouldn't break down as often. Okay. Um, I mean, one of the things, I mean, and again, our fleet garage has done a great job helping us this week mm -hmm. keep our trucks up and running, but they're old. I mean, they're 12 years old as the newest trucks that we have. Thank you. 
to Councilman May. Yeah, I usually go off of memory and I share this with some of y'all. If I'm not mistaken, in the old days, before the emergency manager sold the garbage trucks to Republic, garbage trucks used to have snow plows and help out. We used that fleet of garbage trucks, and I think that record will show that. When you look at the news right now, last I looked, we were at 67 inches in flint sagging off different places. We on a record pace for snow this summer, this, this winter. Yeah. If it get us to 83, yeah. so I'm watching 67, 83. So I told people I'm sticking with the administration, moving snow, how it work, whatever. I will talk about it in council meeting, and I'm talking about it. So I'm doing that on purpose because I'm talking to people, letting them know we're on a record pace you exactly right about these last weekends. And we had some people take some equipment from us called emergency managers. And so now we're trying to get equipment and stuff back together. I'm ready to vote. Just real quick, based on what's been discussed here, is it possible that, like the public that does our garbage, that if they have a large fleet, would they have a few extra trucks to help us? So, so there is a potential there. Um, I think Flint was somewhat unique in the fact that they actually put plow mounts on their garbage trucks. And the last uh, garbage trucks that we owned that we bought were Peterbilt's, um, and they were not configured to, to hang plows on them. Unfortunately, the, the frame rails were not configured. Um, is that something that could be investigated, though, whether our it, Republic it, has that possibility? It, it could be investigated. I, I would like to bring you guys' attention. I, I want to rewind your memories a little bit to the 2013-2014 winter when we had uh, just under a 20-inch snow event. And if you remember correctly, um, some of that snow didn't get moved for over three weeks. So understand that the snow only stopped falling yesterday at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're just now, we're, we're 29 hours after, and the crews are, are currently really finishing up the city. I mean, I, I, I don't know what it is that is expected, but I really think that that's a pretty Herculean effort. If, if you guys just take the time to drive around Flint and realize how big it is and how much snow they're moving, I mean, they're doing a wonderful job. I mean, I can't take the credit for it because I'm not the one out driving the truck, but these guys that are driving these trucks are spending 16 hours on, we give them eight off, and then they come right back at it. And I mean, they've done a, I just think they've done a fabulous job. And I, and I, I understand that people are going to complain, but I really think we, we need to, we need to praise our workers. They've done a wonderful job. Okay. Um, is there any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to council, say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstention? Madam, Mr. Council. Madam Chair, I would move 180033 to Council. Is that there enough? A second? Mm -hmm. It's a point. Oh, he's a naked appointment. Yeah, that one, there's an amended version. So that, so, so we'll get to that. So we'll skip over that one because I see the point one on the next page. So we can cross out 180033. Madam Chair, I withdraw that motion and I would move 180036 to Council. That's dealing with life and short term disability insurance. Okay. Council, yeah, it's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? I didn't see. Mr. Nixon, I just have a question. Um, do you have the information that I requested? Yes, okay. so you all, I don't know if you had a chance to check your email, so there is um, the details, detailed proposals for life insurance and short-term disability insurance that you all should have had in your email inboxes as of, I think, three hours ago. So um, you have that information. Unfortunately, Cornerstone is concerned about um, bringing confidential information regarding what municipalities um, have selected what insurance carriers, mm -hmm. um, as I was concerned about. So mm -hmm. they, did con they did confirm with me that this morning that they don't feel comfortable providing that information, so I do apologize for that. Mm -hmm. um, I do have in, in my inbox somewhere the counts of you know which providers got which, um, but I don't know I don't, which providers got how many municipalities. 
but I do not have which specific provider was selected by which municipality. I apologize for okay. that, but it is a confidential issue. Okay, and um, I just want to, Mr. Newsom and I had a conversation today, and um, he did share this information, and I just want to say it for the record. What I share with Mr. Newsom is the fact that they would say that it's a confidential um, issue alarms me because they are the ones that said it before us. They were the ones that said there was X, Y, Z amount of municipalities that are serviced by this. And I share with Mr. Newsom my concern was um, although they gave their recommendation, they just kind of reminded me of a company that was more pro one company than the other. Instead of just sharing with us their findings and giving us the ability to make a, a, a choice ourselves, they were selling that company. And in, in part of their selling, they even gave a couple of examples and shared that they serviced the majority of the municipalities that they serviced. So since they mentioned that, I didn't think that it was a confidential situation because they used it as part of their selling tool. So the fact that now they weren't, just for me, was a little bit alarming. I told him it reminded me of, of a, a person that supports a certain pharmaceutical company and they come into the doctor's office and they just have a choice because that pharmaceutical has been better to them. Um, and so I just wanted to say that for the record because we talked about that. I respect confidentiality. I just question the fact that they stepped over the line. They opened the door. And so I just wanted to share that. So I'm all good. No other for, no further I have just have a question. Oh, Ms. Uh, which company are you referencing? Um, the one that they recommended, which was Dearborn National. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so hearing none, all in favor of moving this to council say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Extensions, it is moved to council. Madam Chair. Council to Yeah, I would move 180033.1, the amended resolution dealing with the recognition of the non sale revenue from the auction to um, council. What's going on? Is it something? Actually, going to make a motion. I'll talk. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, Withdraw that motion Thank and you. start over. I would move to Sorry. amend. You should have did that when that's, I was there. That's what she was trying, trying to do. Right? Yeah, <laughs> so I missed it. So I would move to amend 180036. No, 3-3. 180033-2180033.1 which is the amended resolution for the recognition of gun sale revenues from the auction. And I apologize for not knowing what you were saying, but um, that would be my motion to um, amend it as written here in the resolution before. Mr. Moody, let's put Councilman here. second. It's been second. Um, is there any discussion? Yes, ma'am. I, I just like to note here that although this is not the vote to have a gun sale or approve a gun sale, it's just to deal with the uh, revenue from the gun sale that was approved. Uh, I had meant to say this at the last meeting, didn't get an opportunity. Um, I actually just wanted on the record that it seems crazy to me that with all of the gun violence that we have in this country and in this city that we are, even though these are internet sales and you don't know where they're going to end up, on principle, I think it's crazy that we're putting guns back out there on the streets, that once they've been confiscated, we're doing that. And I know it's a bit of revenue. Um, I didn't add this all up, how much this is, but for me personally, on principle, I would say have them destroyed. Don't put more guns out on the streets. Just wanted that on the record. Councilwoman Worthing and then Mr. Mays. I share that same concern. I think uh, the, we need less violence in Flint, especially if the guns go right back into Flint. But uh, I also want to go on the record that I'm, I'm not totally in favor of those sales. Revenue I understand and I support that. Um, but I would hope our gun laws would change. But that's a nationwide thing that we need to worry about. Um, especially in light of all the school violence and shootings. As a former teacher, 
Uh, that's a huge concern, and people are dying at record levels every day in this country. That's all. Thank you, Councilman Mays. Yeah, I would just want the record to reflect that when the police department decided to do the gun sale auctions, that communications came before council. And it was discussed and communicated, and if I'm not mistaken, it was a vote of council. Some folks might not have been here. And, you know, you might not have been on council yet. Uh, Ms. Fields was here, whether she was here or not. But that discussion had happened and there was communications and I remember that discussion and voting because I took a position on the revenue aspect of it. Now I hear people say over and over, 100,000 gets a police, 100,000 get police. I'm gonna support it. And so whatever people do, I'm on record, I can't have a gun, don't own a gun, can get shot, don't carry a gun, don't use a gun. And guns don't keep being guns. So if they came and debated it and wanted revenue, so forth and so on, it had been hashed out. Yeah, it's a new council, might not have been here, but that was hashed out and voted on. It's not like the police department just did it without coming before council. So wherever we at now, I'm gonna vote to move this to council and um, we'll be supporting it on the floor. Um. Mr. Newsom, I had um, a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the questions, and I, and I don't know if I raised it um, when we originally talked yeah. about it or if I dreamt about it, um, but I was wondering why would we be establishing different accounts when there's already accounts allocated yeah. for these costs? So I actually did see you an email earlier today okay. about that, but I'll explain it for all the council. Please, okay. Look, what Ms. Galloway's talking about, if you notice, we already have wages, fringes accounts, we have revenue accounts. But what we wanted to do, at least the police department wanted to do in terms of the county, notice that these are going through the 296 fund, which you don't want to, we didn't want to mix this up with any funds that are funded by millages, right? So there could be people specifically uh, funded by, you know, if you, you're going to have people with wages and salaries are there, so that's, you know, maybe a cop two or three that are funded with the revenue from this, from this, these sales, right? So the other question that you asked, Ms. Galloway, was the question around uh, professional services. What are we going to use, what are we going to use it for? So the game plan is after you take the balance of what's left over after you buy, if you pay for the salaries of, of police officers, they would also use this to overhaul the uh, indoor gun range, right? So that's how this is going to work. But to make back back to your point, this is flowing through the 296 fund versus, say, the public safety fund or the general fund because we didn't want to mix revenue and cross those streams, so to speak. So does that mean that um, some of the funds that we normally would allocate in the general funds would actually receive some relief? To indirectly. be placed other places? Indirectly, yes. So in okay. theory, you know, we're going to review the police department but proposed budget for the overall budget process. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if, I don't know what, you know, I don't know exactly what the proposal is going to okay. be. But if they were to propose that they need, say, an, a, an additional two, three, four cops on the street, then you can fund it with this revenue, and this is the way they set it up, versus the revenue from the general fund. So in theory, Either I can have more cops, or maybe I can have more police officers through this through this um, process, or I can remove, I can pull some police officers from the general fund and put them into this into this mm -hmm. fund funded by this revenue. So that's the reason it's done this way through the 296 fund. Huey, can you tell me the difference between direct fringe and overtime? Fringe, that's more of a benefit, so that helps to pay for your health insurance, some of those some of those benefits versus overtime is stricter the cash mm -hmm. you get working outside of your membership. Okay, and so these funds have been pretty allocated, pretty specific. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so does that mean that they already have something in mind for these dollars? Well, like the way the formula works, we'll hire a police officer or police officers at a certain level, and their forms, my friends back here in the administration know the PSWs very well, <laughs> but the PSWs are built so that, you know, given a certain rank, the, it breaks out what that cost is going to be. So if you're going to pay someone, say, $40,000, mm -hmm. there's a certain, you know, if they're in the, say they're in the direct benefit, the, mm -hmm. the fine benefit plan mm -hmm. for, for retirees, 
right? So in theory, there's a there's a formula that goes to a different account. You okay. see the breakdown. So there's numbers that there's numbers that flow to a different account. They're not seeing any cash. Okay. And then there's an estimate for overtime. So all these different benefits go to different accounts, and then overtime is its own separate account. So that's the way that works. And the reason why I was asking is because um, one of the things just wanted to be sure that um, with the general fund there is more oversight. Typically, that, that's a, I'm, glad that you, right? I'm glad you raised that. The okay. way the 296 is set up to okay. work okay. Um, is that it's again set up to collect the revenue from different grants and then disperse it. Okay. Right. Um, so, but to that point, our plan is that we, you know, we'll, if, if revenue drops, obviously we have to cross that bridge when we get to it. Mm -hmm. But our plan is that we won't, we do not, we will not, do not intend to spend any more money that's flowing through this. Okay. But this, but again, we use this this fund to channel funding from different grants. So if the if the um, general fund found itself low and they needed some equipment, mm -hmm. and, and general funds didn't have it, is it possibly that they would consider moving these funds over there in an effort to support or what they wanted? Pay for it out of this current okay. direct, okay. and so that in theory will come before you, because okay. that would be in a minute. All right. Yeah, I um, this uh, to uh, update their gun range. Yeah, do you know the cost of that? Um, the, if whatever you have in that allocation right now for professional services, I'm have twenty thousand. Yeah, whatever that number is for professional services, is it eight on one dot hundred? Yeah, twenty thousand. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. So that's what that right now. That's because I was thinking maybe they could use. I've been to a gun range twice. Here, I think. Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to council say aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Move to council. Councilman Mays? Yeah, I would move 180. Zero four five the settlement Smith versus the city of Flint to council. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Davis. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor of moving this to council. Mr. Brown. I thought. Okay. When we talked about this before, I thought we were talking about. This is the guy that fell in the manhole. Mm -hmm. well, we, we we would have talked about it in closed session. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we talked about this last week. Point of order. 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 Councilman Mays. Let me withdraw that motion and back up. We voted to amend oh, one sure eight did. zero zero three three point one, and the clerk has called to my attention. Now we got a vote to move the amendment to council. So I withdraw the motion on the Smith settlement and come back to it, Mr. Griggs. But I would now move one eight zero zero three three point one. The amended resolution for the recognition of gun sale revenue to council. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Davis has been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to council say aye. aye. Opposed? Abstention? It moves. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Now I would move 1800045 to settlement Smith versus City of Flint to council. Been moved is there a second? Councilman Guerra? Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? I hate to what this um, Madam Chair. Councilman May. Through you to the city attorney, could yeah. you remind us what um, this is? This is a workers' comp case for a Flint firefighter. So we spoke about it in the closed session last week. Oh, oh, oh okay. Come here, with me. Mr. Chair. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to council signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Move to council. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Since I see Mr. Allen Gilbert in the room, I'm not making this motion. But <laughs> I know it's coming out of the seventh ward, but since you're chairing the meeting, maybe I reconsider and move. <laughs> One eight zero zero four six. The appointment, the, the reappointment of Mr. Allen Gilbert to um, council. Mr. 
been moved and seconded. Second. 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 It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Sir, Madam Chair. The council remains. Is Mr. Gilbert, you would like to be reappointed through you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Gilbert? Yes, sir, I would, uh, Councilman Mays. If, uh, well, somebody feel you would. <laughs> you like to serve. Hey, you like that board of review? I do. I, like I can okay. speak for him. Okay. Um, I'm going to support it then, Mr. Pastor Gilbert. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say for the record, Pastor Gilbert has uh, been gracious to serve in this capacity. Um, um, we talked about it, and, and there is the ability to help in, in, in whatever way we can, and I appreciate your um, willingness to continue to serve. So is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of sending this to council, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Moves to council. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Fields? I would like to move 180047, 180048. 180049 Council. Is there a second? Ms. Wagner? It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, when I do appointments and <coughs> sometime I set go do them slow and separate them because I don't always vote the same. As far as moving it to council, I'll support moving all of them to council as a group. And then I peruse them and see do I vote yay or nay on them and see if I split them up on the floor. I might not, but uh, based up on the way time was moving and I'm looking at the agenda, I was taking them one by one. I'll support moving them to council as a group and we still might be on the second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of moving this to council say aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? They move to council. Um, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Fields. Um, before you, I don't know if you have anything under new business, but I would like to make a referral to um, our finance officer, Angel Legal. Point of um, order. Councilman Mays. Let the chair go through ordinances, discussion items, and get the new business if you choose, but I'm quiet and everything. Madam is in Chair, order. Ma I mean, uh, Madam Clerk, it's is it necessary for me to um, have to say them like I, we I say on council? Uh, for, for, for the record, if you would want to indicate are there any ordinances, discussion items, and then <clears throat> just give the. So new title. business would be referrals. If it's okay, I would just like to chair the meeting, and I'm only asking that, Ms. Brown, because normally referrals are made in, or in between other things. And so if we're going to set a precedent, I'm just trying to understand, because for those of us that don't know, new business was just added to each of our things. And so I just want to do things orderly, Ms. Brown. It's been my first time sharing with new business being at the bottom of the thing. And so I'd like to do it according to however benefits the whole um, um, the body. And so I just want from, to know. From a technical standpoint, special affairs would be for any unanswered question from the committee. Correct. Okay. Correct. As well as um, any emergency thing that Correct. would come up. Correct. Any new business I think would be taken up from the board. Thank you. Okay. And I just want to say for the record, I don't want polarization in this meeting. I just want us to respect each other. And so I don't want one person to think that one thing is acceptable if we're going to have processes. I just thought that it was appropriate since this was a new item that has been added to our, I just want to make sure that I do it right. Order. And so Councilman May. Councilman May. Yeah, my only point was we had ordinances, discussion items, and new business. I'm not opposed to referrals going on the new business, but that was my point of order, and I think it was missed. I heard it, okay. but I wanted to clarify, too. Okay. And so, are there any ordinances? Am I usually the clerk, Miss Clerk, Madam Clerk, do I need the chair like we do on the floor? There's, are there any ordinances? There no ordinances. Any discussion items? Thank you. So now we're at new business, Ms. Well, I want to get to Ms. Fields. Councilman Mays. Maybe she got a discussion. Oh, 
Do you have a discussion? I do. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> uh, we had to leave last meeting, uh, and I didn't get all my questions answered uh, about the resolution that we had passed uh, concerning the grant funding and redistrib redistributing. And I don't know if it's appropriate to speak to that here or during the council meeting. Um, Madam um, Chair. Council Mayor. Yeah, I think it is appropriate and I think it's relevant. I think we wanted to find out. Um, I see Ms. Wilcox here. There were some issues I read about in the newspaper as it relates to <coughs> what she alluded to about money from more than one year. And I don't know if she's had time to communicate with her and get sufficient answers. So I think it is proper to discuss this because we're going to go into the meeting, the next regular meeting. And that would be the meeting that I would look at for any reconsideration and or whatever. So through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Wilcox, and anybody in the administration who can bring me up to speed, that's a discussion item that I wanted to hear about either in special fairs or the floor. We got a couple minutes, so through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Wilcox. Do well, we first of all, before I, uh, before I address Ms. Wilcox, and I appreciate recognizing you, I don't want to take the floor from Ms. Worthy. Did you have specific questions that Point you would like order, to Madam Chair. Chair. You gave me the floor. No. And you did. Right, but. And so now I had the floor. I'm saying through you to Ms. Wilcox, and that's proper. But Councilman Mays, I, I made an error. I thought oh, that you okay. were addressing Mrs. Worthy Ms. not taking Mr. the Chair, floor back Madam from her. I made a mistake, Madam Councilman Chair, Mays, and I'm, I'm fixing it mistake. now. I did. All you did was Ms. Worthy ask a question of anybody. I was given the floor and chimed in. I have no problem yielding to you, Ms. Worthy. And the bottom line is when we can hear from Ms. Wilcox, that's, I think, what she was asking about. Council so, Mays, you're right. I, I but, think but, I am right. But, but Councilman Mays, I'm I just done want to for say right that now. when I answer, and you are, I just want to say that when I recognized you, I thought, I, I didn't, my fault, I wasn't intending to give she you the floor. She heard you know if she answer. had something okay. else. She asked a oh. question. Well, how could she if you... She you could, were, she right. could, I'm she gonna, could. Don't put hard. it on me. Did you want to address the council? If, if there are specific questions, I'm yes. happy to answer them. Um, I have heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, that Pastor Flynn owes the city money as far as the Osmond water bills. Mm -hmm. how can, you, can you speak to that, if that's true or not? Wait a minute. Point of, uh, well, wait a minute. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask. Point of information. <laughs> Is that relevant to right. block grant allocation? Right? I, I can speak to that. Well, no, no. As the chair, what I'm going to say is the information that we need to figure out if the reallocation needs to be, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Reconsidered. Reconsidered. Is that piece is not relevant. To me, it is. Well, well, I mean, he, I mean, that, if he owes the city money, we should be giving money. Miss Worthy, Miss Worthy, I respect that. But, <laughs> but if I may, if I may, just say for the record, for me, making sure that we understand what HUD's expectations are for reallocation of funds, regardless of who they're going to, seems to be the overshadowing concern, at least. For the council to determine whether this needs to be reconsidered or not right and so once once we decide whether that's going to be done the other pieces of how the people get to it i think I, and i don't know i i just deem that chairing this meeting that's what's relevant and so uh, and and i'm not saying that what you're asking for is not relevant miss worthy i'm just saying for the the immediate action that we have to take tonight on the reconsideration that piece is going to be a piece that we're going to decide on when we decide that yes we are going to allow the reallocation of funds i don't know if i'm making sense or not i hope i'm not being confusing i have no i, I if 
No, no. <laughs> I don't understand why it's not relevant because it's, it's relevant for my vote. Well, right now, the, the concern is HUD is saying these funds shouldn't I be allocated that. this way, right? I understand okay. that okay. piece, and that is relevant as well. Okay. But if that all checks out and they owe the city money and I've helped to vote for, re, you know, for the reallocation, then I that would upset me. Correct. But first things first. Tonight, we need to either reconsider or not. If we don't reconsider, we can't. Is that right? Well, Madam Chair, if I may. Councilman Mays. Whether it's Big Brothers, Big Sisters, United Way, or whatever, if they got a water bill, whether they done paid it on the 12th or the 30th or next month, we've never addressed that. If it's a written policy, I have no problem discussing it, Ms. Worthy, but I do agree. Let's see what updated information, and if you want to check somebody's water account, whether it's North Flint Reinvestment, Boss Avenue, or Mr. Flynn himself, let's make sure we check in the right accounts to right. see if it's relevant and if it's written policy. So can we take it step by step? And I have no problem with you checking on anything. We got subpoena power, we can check on whatever, but let's make sure we on track. And Ms. So Worthen, I would rather I just hear from the expert. Ms. Worthen, I just uh, want to say that Ms. your Wilcox. concern is valid. And so, but Ms. If Wilcox, it's a policy, if it ain't no policy. Can I just respond to that really quickly? Because I think I could help with that, actually. We have a process in place for um, any agency that we award funds to. When we go through the process to execute a contract, we do verify that they, there's a good standing process, so we have to verify, and all organizations have to be in good standing with the city. So if there are any delinquent water bills, property taxes outstanding, they come back to us, and then we cannot enter into a contract until that is actually satisfied. So you asked for Pastor Flynn, that's a, that's a different issue. We don't deal with individuals. I'm assuming you meant North Flint yes. Reinvestment Corporation. Um, that is something, and it is my understanding that, the, that those delinquent bills that were identified at some point have all been resolved. So, thank you. Um, and I, based on that, I, I would like to make a referral. Um, a referral that all council people receive a copy of the rules, policies, <coughs> or process guidelines for dispersing CDBG funds and or the reallocation mm -hmm. um, and, and in that um, we just want to understand how HUD understand HUD's concerns like what is the process before so that we never get to where we are does that make sense I don't know if you guys have procedures we do, in of place course. you do of okay we do. okay um, okay and I just want to address one thing related to that when you say HUD's concerns um, HUD doesn't typically have concerns with our process. Those concerns were elevated by um, a reporter, by some misstatements that were made in the news in the M Live article, and so the questions were actually um, just questions related to the article that they read in the paper that had some information that is not accurate. So that is what actually precipitated their questions and so what I'm doing right now is responding to those questions and have responded to those questions to really kind of evolve that discussion uh, towards satisfaction. So I would not characterize it at this point as HUD's concerns. Um, there's questions that they're asking based upon an article that they read um, and also based upon, uh, I think, um, communication from community members to direct um, HUD employees. So I would not classify it as concerns at this point. We're having a discussion with them, we're answering their questions, we're resolving their questions, and then we're just taking it step by step as part of our due diligence. Okay. Madam Chair, yeah, when I look at the agenda for the um, regular council meeting, as it relates to the relevant arena, um, and not saying that this is not relevant discussion, we had a little time, but, um, through you, Madam Chair, to Ms. Wilcox, if we have rules that say we need to do reconsideration at the next council meeting, and you know, I'm a believer in rules, I believe you can suspend the rules, and you might could do it in another piece. But at this point, based upon those concerns, because I said to trustees of this city on the council with me and others, 
quit telling people to call hood and send letters to hood and raise red flags. But the community and council people can do what they want. I'm not trying to raise red flags and jeopardize money, but I do want to vote right. That's why my statement was, if all I's is dotted and T's is crossed. Now the red flag's been raised by whoever raised them. I'm hoping that they'll come back when you communicate on their questions that's been raised. Everything is in order. I remember this conversation clearly, Ms. Fields. You were saying that it had to be reallocated with the approval of the Citywide Advisory Council. Admit that that ain't true based upon Article 33. So we heard that concern. And I know Mr. Woodson said on it, and my ward, Mr. Harrison, said on it. So that citywide advisory conversation that was raised around the table when it was being reallocated was not accurate because that ain't really properly in place based upon the emergency manager order. That's one. Two, I've heard that money has been reallocated in more than one year and the communications have to do with 10%, 350,000 on 3.5 million, but if it's technically for more than one year, we might not be beyond that 3.5 for one year, but Ms. Wilcox also said there's some internal communications with 15%. So all of these things I heard throughout about citywide advisory committee, that one seems to be not accurate. The 10% might be 15%. The allocations might be from more than one year and don't even qualify for that public participation input, whatever the technical word is. And that's what I was asking Ms. Wilcox for a feeling on. And regardless of one way or another, if we reconsider and table into these questions as answered. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But that's the specific questions that I'm trying to find out. The new stuff, she's answered that about Flint, North Flint reinvestment water bills. I've been in so many council meetings, I know that people from the public, and they have a right to, they have a right to talk to council people. But council people, before we get out here, um, saying stuff about folks as best we can. We should talk to the people in that department first. Now, keep in mind, don't get me to lie, because I will bring it on the flow. I will talk names, name, names, but that will start something. If you start naming folks' name in the community, like Pastor Flynn, and not saying North Flint reinvestment and don't know the rules, it kind of sends an aura of something. And so I'm really trying to caution this council. I have no problem getting to the nitty gritty and talking and politicking and whatever. And so remember, I ain't blaming you, Mr. Griggs, but ever you have to if you need a ride and you ain't got one, I'll take you home. No, you don't no. have to leave no meeting when we're trying to take Council care of business because other people there. Okay. Oh, believe me, that's home. relevant because it's she not. said she wasn't here <laughs> and left. That but was her opening statement. Madam Chair, it has a lot to do with information and flow. Madam Chair, I don't want to appeal you. You need to quit interrupting me when I'm making points. You want me to appeal? You want me to Because you don't have the flow. I do. And you done sat and talked all this meeting. I don't care if you're the chair. It's inappropriate for you to start. It's inappropriate for you to interrupt me when I refer to people who left early and tell Mr. Griggs he don't have it's not relevant to what we're it's talking about right now. It's relevant to this discussion. Because we was in meetings and agendas Council was gone. Mays, I say on her agenda. Councilwoman Dalloway. Wrap up. And if I don't. Then I will rule you out of order. You can do that now. 
I was in order. You was out Councilman of order. Mays. Interrupted me when I'm discussing. Councilman something. Mays, I'm going to rule you out of order. I am tired of your intimidation tactics. I mean, stick you to, like stick you to the process. Me. Stick to what I you're talking about. The ruling fine. The there is an appeal for and the I'll ruling of the. It. it has been mo moved and seconded. I will say this the reason why I'm ruling him out of order, I am tired of you continuing to attack certain council people. You need to remain relevant to the subject matter without bringing attention to someone else's actions and or what you deem to be necessary to bring it on camera to say what they did. Miss Worthing acknowledged that she wasn't there, but for you to continue, Councilman Mays, it won't happen. Not while I'm chairing a meeting. And so now that that has been discussed, is there any other um, discussion on the chair ruling him out of order for that behavior? Madam Chair. Councilman I, I Davis. It was, it was not an attack. All he did was it was relevant to the conversation at the last meeting because some members wasn't here to know what went on. Amen. It was it was relevant what he was speaking of. And I just want to say for the record, I was here. In order. Councilman you Mays, your I can, discussion. I can Go say around to others. You can't Council dominate the oh discussion because you the chair. So Call right. on the people. I am. You the chair, I'll give you, you that right. I do have something to say. Uh, I am in agreement with you that this is a technique that Councilman Mays uses often, intimidation, harassment, threats, um, and racial comments. And I actually want to make a formal referral to the law department for a legal opinion about this type of behavior according to the city of Flint policy established by Mr. Ambrose in 2015. So I will not be voting to uh, support this appeal because it's constant and ongoing. Councilwoman Worthy. <clears throat> I'm in agreement with you and I want to thank you uh, for how you're chairing this meeting. Uh, once you said it's not relevant, which it's not relevant to the discussion at hand, then we need to move on. And uh, it is intimidation, it's a bullying, and uh, I would like to hear what this referral says because as I stated in a council meeting not long ago, that harassment in the workplace is not, it's not only unlawful, it's discrimination. And the city has so far in my mind not done one thing to move this along and, and investigate and, and do anything about it. And so I'm very interested in hearing what the legal department has to say. Anybody um, else? I need to speak, please. You know, as far as I'm concerned, there's all kind of unprofessionalism going on here. First of all, he was talking. Let him speak. Last week, uh, Councilman Davis was interrupted. I think that everyone sitting at this table, we were all elected. We should be able to speak. We should be able to voice our concerns, our issues, okay, without being interrupted. It's unprofessional, point blank. I'm, 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 I'm tired of it. And, and yes, I did second his, his appeal, just because it's very unprofessional to stop him, disrupt him from talking. I think, and, and we, need to, we need to understand that everybody has a way to um, put an end to this dialogue, okay? We're supposed to be having dialogue here. And everybody's opinion should be respected no matter how or which way they get to making their point everybody has a different way of of, of making their point councilman mays has a different way of bringing his point together let him do it councilman uh, davis has a different way of bringing his point together and i have a different way of bringing my point together we all have a different way of bringing our points together Okay? I think it's very unprofessional to disrupt someone while they're speaking. And we, we need to change that rule. We need to, we need to talk about changing that rule. Madam Chair. Councilman. Yeah, Madam Chair. Each time we get to a point lately, I've withdrew the appeal. But the point is, it's a fact. You, the, you and Ms. Fields interrupted Mr. Davis last week. Just because you're the chair, once you get a floor up, you can't just take it and interrupt. That's wrong. It's out of order. I've had lunch with Mr. Griggs 
was it last week or this week, Mr. Green? Was it this week or last week? So when I said to him, because of a ride situation, he didn't have to leave if he chose to or didn't choose to, I know what I was saying because he wanted to know what was happening. I remember a time when I wasn't driving. And so I like to stay for meetings. Miss Worthing started out identifying that she wasn't here. Everybody on YouTube or whatever seen what happened, they didn't talk to me about it. So it ain't no attack, but what is an attack when you got the same two people making personal attacks on me? Racial. Miss Phil said that in this discussion. Race wasn't an issue until she brought it up. She brought up racism. Bullying, harassment, intimidation. These are some heavy adjectives toward this senior council person. The confidential memo that she sent out to Ms. Worthen and Ms. others. Ms. Council Council the, the confidential memo she sent out addressed her alleged racism. It's still a legal opinion there. I'm here to tell you, you can shake your head, Ms. Galloway. You can agree. But when they call me racist or bully, Councilman Mays, or, you are an appeal the chair. I am arguing the appeal. Really? Yeah, really, I am. And okay. you interrupted me again. That's what this appeal is. You can't take it. See, when we sit and listen to you, don't nobody interrupt. But when we... What is your study mad about? Just can finish. I don't, I don't, I don't. Why is your study interrupted? You ahead. can't handle the chair where you have to listen to others. Is that's what Council the Council because I'm you continue talking, Madam Chair, and I was up. doing pretty good. And up. What are you? You wrap up and shut up while I'm talking. Okay, That's what this is all about. The, the Why email, is you interrupting me when email, I'm talking? Because I'm tired of the I way that you monopolize it. No, we not. Me. No, we not. I can because withdraw my opinion. Because I can still have you removed. Man. If, it, have if, me if you withdraw it, then I can have you removed. Have is removed. that correct? Have me removed because so you're so bad. I will. Well, do it. I will. Do it. I do want counseling. If he's dropping his, removing his appeal, then that means me ask, ruling him out of order. Oh, that means I get to rule you out of order. And so I can have him removed if he doesn't appeal my chair. I mean, appeal my ruling. Is that right, Officer Metcalf? Okay. And so I want to I, I, I wanna say for the record, Councilman Mays, you can play these political games if you want to. And I respect your response, Mrs. Winfrey Carter. But I will tell you this, as the chair, you have to have the ability. Councilman Mays brings up things that are not relevant, but he continues point to steal. Why no, is no. you arguing this? It's a point of order. No, point because, of order. because I get to respond. Point of order. Okay. It's, it's removed. It's oh, gone. Okay. Move on. Point of order. Quit arguing. Can I um, have a, a motion? Yeah. Do you still have a referral? Yes, can you I make do. it from the floor? Can I make it now? It's very quick. Okay. Okay, based on the discussion of finance about the uh, life insurance and short-term disability that you're going to investigate the cost of that for council, I would like you to also investigate, uh, and this is to Ms. Wheeler and to Mr. Newsom because I don't know where the EFM orders come into this, but what it would take to re, uh, reinstitute the ability of city council okay. to pay into a retirement benefits fund. Could you please investigate that for me? Thank you. Ms. Wilcox, Mr. Garrett has a question for you. Okay. Yeah, going back to the uh, CBT and you had a question from Hyde. It, it was clear you stated that no contract had been signed yet, so that was confirmed that that was all legitimate and completely legal. Correct. That's part of our due diligence. Okay. Before we actually move into effectuating a contract, there are certain things that we have to verify. There's additional information we have to get. There's other requirements. Um, that we're required to satisfy before we can enter into a contract, and so that that is that is still the case. We have not entered into a contract yet. Okay, okay. Uh, Ms. Wilcox, I have something. Um, I just want to say for the record, um, I sent Mrs. Mr. Um, Steve Branch and Ms. Wilcox an email, and Ms. Wilcox, I want you to understand how that email, Mr. Branch, how it came about. In speaking with President Winfrey, mm -hmm. he thought that it would be a good idea mm -hmm. to hopefully avoid a reconsideration 
if it were as simple as finding out what HUD's concerns were mm -hmm. and what your response to HUD was. Mm -hmm. um, but when I sent the email, and I'd like to read it for the record, I put, hello, Steve, I am requesting a copy of the HUD email sent to Ms. Wilcox be provided to all council members about concerns relating to the reallocated funds approved by the council on January 22nd, 2018. I would also like the response Ms. Wilcox gave to HUD be provided to all council members as well. In the committee meeting held on February 7, 2018, Ms. Wilcox stated she planned to respond to HUD February 8th, she said tomorrow. This information is needed prior to the Monday, February 12, 2018 City Council meeting. Thank you for providing the council with the information needed to make the best fiduciary decisions on behalf of our city. In which Ms. Wilcox, you responded, I say ask her to make a referral for this information at Monday's meeting. Of which I would like to make that referral. Um, to have a copy of the email that HUD has sent to you stating their concerns and your response to them. So I'm making that referral also. But with that, I was concerned with that response only because in an effort of unity to make sure that what we had all agreed upon didn't have to be revisited. So when I received that response, to me, it seemed like it wasn't providing me with the information specifically from HUD that they were asking about. So it wasn't about questioning anybody else's decisions or how they came up with how they decided who got the money. It specifically was only asking for what is HUD saying their concern is. And so to not be able to get that prior to this meeting was, a, was disappointing to me. And I'm not, you know, just because it would have, to me, diffused everything that the media was saying, that people might have been saying, because it came straight from a HUD representative, right? And so I'm making that referral. With that, my question will be to this council, if we do not um, raise a reconsideration and table, however table works, do we miss the opportunity? If we don't raise it now, do we lose it? And whatever happens, then we have no say. I don't know. Maybe the council can talk point about that when we're out on the floor. You don't need to do a point of Madam information, Chair. Councilman Mays. Madam Chair, I don't think Ms. Wilcox is the expert on our procedure. You asking her would we lose an opportunity. I think no, I wasn't are. asking her. I asked Madam Ms. Chair, can I finish talking? No. Because Why you're I can't finish this. talking? You I can't keep interrupting grown folks. I didn't ask Ms. Wilcox, though. Just so you know. Well, well, let me finish and then correct me. Well, That's point where of the problem order, starts. Point of information. A, Did you is. realize that I didn't ask Ms. Wilcox? I asked this council. No, no, I did Thank not. You. While now you're you doing do. your head. Now you do. So my position is this. I don't think that she answers that question. I think it's answered among us, between our staff and whatever and what we do. And so that's what I think. I'm glad that we went into the discussion item of it, didn't skip over. And so I'm going to move that we adjourn this meeting. And that's my motion. Second has been moved and supported. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. Aye. All opposed.